segment called The News Today. Now, The News Today is a segment that will also give you the chance to talk about governance and to talk about societal issues here on Showbiz Agenda. We still want to contribute to the development of Ghana and beyond. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at what is in the news today. Now, something opi- uh, happened last week. And as it stands now, I still don't know the issues of the people, what really their problems and their issues are. But then we're going to read some of these stories in the news today so that you can also share with us what is happening. Now, it's about the naming of some institutions in, uh, or, no, better the renaming, the renaming of some institutions in Ghana and matters arising out of it. I've seen so many stories online that I'll be reading here and there. This one, for instance, on City Newsroom, uh, it says, a Kufuadu Lord's decision to rename University of Energy after Buzia. And I want to read this story. The University of Energy and Natural Resources, UENR Sunyane, in the Bono region will soon be renamed to honor the memory of former Prime Minister of the Second Republic, that is Dr. Kofi Abrefa Buzia. This was announced by President Anna Adodankwa Kufuadu on Saturday. He commended the Governing Council of the University for taking such a decision. President Akufu while speaking at the fourth congregation of the university in Sunyane said the decision follows approval of the name change by parliament. Now it goes on to say that uh, following the decision taken by the university's council on August 3rd, 2018, the university will be named after one of the illustrious sons of the region, Professor K.A. Buzia. After the decision had received parliamentary approval, he stated and missed applause. Now President Akufuado also eulogized Dr. Kofi Abrefa Buzia for his immense contribution to was the country's development. And now a representative of the Wenchi Traditional Council, uh, the hometown of the late K.A. Buzia, Achimhine, Achimhine Nana Damwa Kwasane Adesepoku, Kofabai thanked the university and the president for the honor done to their son. The University of Energy and Natural Resources is among four universities chosen by the government to be renamed in the public university bill proposed by cabinet and passed by parliament. Now, the other universities are University of Development Studies, the University of Professional Studies, Accra, and the University of Health and Allied Sciences. Now, uh, the University of Energy and Natural Resources was established by an act of parliament, Act 830, in 2011 on December 31st, uh, 2011. And it goes on like that. Meanwhile, there are other similar stories I would want to uh, share with you as well. Where a um, man like Manasseh is asking that it's a kufuado under the spell of Juju. That is what Manasseh is asking. And uh, this story also reads, Investigative journalist Manasseh Azuri Awuni is questioning if President Anando Dankwa is under the spell of voodoo, known as Juju in local parlance. It is not clear if this question is related to uh, the renaming of the University of Energy and Natural Resources, uh, Sunyane in the Bono region after the late Prime Minister of the Second Republic, Professor Kofi Abrefa Buzia. Now, in a post on his Facebook page, the a former multimedia journalist now in freelance asked Obi Atu Omampani Adrana to wit is the president under the spell of Juju in tree. Now he added JB Dankwa Republic of Ghana capital town is Chebi. Since the president announced the decision by the governing council to rename the university, there have been a series of debates with sections arguing that he should start new universities and name them than after these individuals if he is determined to honor them. And it goes on like that. Meanwhile, another guy <laughs> I hear he is also a presidential staffer is saying that energy uni renaming tribal bigots. We see you all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are the issues? What is wrong? What is right? And what is really influencing the renaming of these universities and more? And old Miss Alevano, let me start with you. Oh. <laughs> now I'll call Nafti. Nafti, you see, I change it, you know. There be, but who knows? Anything is possible. Now you change it, you know. Nafti, they change it. Uh, why can't you wait in the afternoon? Uh, uh, early uh, filmmakers, maybe. Ida, Henry, something, something. P. Chris Hesse. Uh, Chris Hesse, uh, yeah. Ida, some wait in the afternoon. Chris uh, Hesse. Chris Hesse yeah. you know, one of all these old you know, oh. film filmmakers. Okay. Uh, but anyways, uh-huh. renaming, renaming. I've, I've realized on social media, folks are having mixed feelings about it. You read a lot of comments. Uh, people are trivializing it. 
you know, busy in the fee crowd, one share or best or any about the rename. Why would you crowd cry at me rename him all? Yes, and I think these reactions are, are showing because people are perhaps not happy with the renaming. Now, first of all, I also heard folks say we don't honor our folks. You know, our old men who have done stuff for us, who laid their lives down to make Ghana what Ghana is today. And so we need to honor them. Yes, I mean, Ghanaians are aware that we give honor to whom is due. But then Ghanaians are also aware that there is something called priorities. And so much as they would be okay if you honor people who deserve it, it should be prioritized in a certain way. Now, the people want roads. The people want enabling environment for their businesses to thrive. The people want good education system for their children. The mm-hmm. people want the financial um, atmosphere to be stable so that if you're doing any business, you can at least get something out of it. Bottom line, the people want to be satisfied. They want progress. They want to be satisfied. They mm. want progress before if there is any renaming, if not naming, then that could be done. But if they are not experiencing all these things, they wake up, they are hungry, their jobs are not going well, uh, roads are not good for them to transport their produ- uh, products from the villages to town. Now I'm talking about farmers. Exactly. If the, the roads, the links that connect them to the major cities and towns where their businesses could thrive, they are not having all these things done. And all they see is renaming. Even though they, are, they, they should be okay with that, they are hungry, so they won't be okay. Hmm. They won't be okay. As a tree cast away, yeah, yeah, here. And some idea, fatter. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. The people want to have their basic amenities provided. provided. Mm-hmm. They want to have their basic life put in check, mm-hmm. so they know that we are on track. Me sorry, I'm many a dear me di. Me ti me tuya me bus school fees. Me business a koso. Into a chinao be catch and say you've renamed a, a building. Uh, you know, an institution. An institution mm-hmm. with somebody's name. They don't really bother because they are okay. They don't really care. But if all these things are not realized and all they wake up to see is renaming, 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 then it feels like you are not looking at what we need. You are probably just doing what you want. Mm, mm, and that's mm. why you would have all these reactions on social media. In fact, social media is the world. In, in case now. Yes, social mm. media is the mm. world. So whatever you do, if it goes well, that's where you would you would see it. If it yeah. goes bad, mm. that's where you see it. As mm. a matter of fact, government uses social media as a platform for trial balloons. To assess themselves. Yes. Mm. As a platform for trial balloons. They, 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 they bounce ideas to see what reactions will be From before people. they take it. Mm. And it's evident if you study how Gabi or Tridakun does his posts, you could tell that sometimes he wants to see the reaction of people before the, the, the decision even gets the taken. Yeah. So they know how powerful it is and they know that message that comes from there are messages from the people and how they feel directly in relation to what they are doing. So if the people are not happy about it, it is there. It is evidence. You see it. If they can't get these basic amenities provided and you are renaming, then they feel they have a problem with it. Then why don't you build a name? If it is very important, mm-hmm. then build a name. Mm. If it's roads mm. you want to construct, construct the roads. You constructed it. Name it after you. That's acceptable. Mm. If it's school, build a school. Name it after you. It's acceptable. If it's banks, hospitals, build a hospital. Construct them. Put your name on it. And the people will be cool. At least it is giving them something. Now, if you rename University of Professional Studies or whatever, which is already in existence, mm. the people are benefiting or deriving whatever they need to derive from it what would the new name do what significant change would the name bring to the people what significant purpose when would the name say when everything is already being same. experienced mm. like you're coming to rename xylophone fm aponchi fm mm. whatever Zalo- we are, we are yes. still doing the same content we're still doing the format. same thing so the renaming itself what significant benefit will it bring to the people but then if you set up a new radio station with the name Aponchi FM, if that's how you want to call it, it will come with its benefits and the benefit to be attached to the name. Then the people will feel it and know exactly what you're coming out with. But if it's already in existence, whether positive or negative, and you rename it, what significant benefit does it bring to the people? Okay. All they will think is, okay, um, blah, 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 did something for Ghana some years ago, so his name has been put on this. That's it. What else? So, construct 
a name. Construct a name. Construct a name. But if you decide not to construct a name and you want to do renaming, get the people what they need first. Mm. Mm. Give them mm. the basic amenities. Give mm. them the schools. Give Take the children off the street. Take the schools off the trees or under trees. Get them hospitals. Potable water. The roads that can transport whatever they do from where it is to where it has to be. Then after that. Then after that, rename. Mm. Nobody will have any issues with you if they are having their data very cheap like some of us who work online we need very very cheap data you give me cheap data you give me road i don't have to stress to get my business running if you rename who cares but i don't have all these things and you are renaming what for what significant change is it going to bring priority has gone wrong that's why i said the Ghanaian knows that it is important to honor our heroes we are aware but the Ghanaian also knows something called priorities so get the priorities right. Okay, thank you so much, An old Mason Levanyo. This is called the news today. And uh, one thing has been in the news over the weekend. And uh, this morning on the news today, we are looking at it. It is about the renaming of some educational institutions in Ghana. Now, a line in um, the story from um, Manasseh uh, freaks me a lot. This story is on uh, GhanaWeb.com, where it says, It's Akufuadu under the spell of Juju. Now, one line says, This comes barely a month after a proposal for the renaming of the Navrongo campus of the University for Development Studies, UDS, after C.K. Tedham, the immediate past chairman of the Council of Elders of the governing New Patriotic Party, NPP, who passed on recently. I must be very honest. Yes, it can be necessary. It is necessary. But uh, New Patriotic Party chairman, the that I have got come through the renaming of the investors. Your Sonny, opinion, boss. Mm. Well, it's, it's, it's actually a very sensitive issue. I know. You know, um, everything we do here is sensitive, even yeah. the rappers. <laughs> first of all, first of all, first of all, I think that um, as a government, when a government they, they take charge and everything, the first thing that needs to be on the boards is to make the people feel comfortable. That's true. And that is, you know, providing all the social the amenities, basic needs. the basic needs for mm-hmm. everybody, building schools and everything. I agree with Arnold that when you build and then you name, mm-hmm. that is how it's supposed to be. We don't have to prioritize naming things after. Even though there's a saying that a nation that does not honor its heroes is not worth dying, dying for. for. Yeah. So that is in the box. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we need not to prioritize honoring heroes mm-hmm. over you know providing basic amenities for the people mm-hmm. because as we stand now people complain every day about hardships about the rise of the dollar you know marketers and everybody is talking about it so i think the first thing that we need to be championing all the first thing that we need to be focusing on is to how to resolve the issues with the people okay. how we resolve issues with people going to school under trees how we resolve with bad roads this morning mm-hmm. when i was coming there was a radio that was announcing that there is a demonstration going on in pukwase mm. to Accra, see. Ah. they said they are not allowing any car to go because it's a new construction building. yes they said their road has been bad for some for some time now and the mp is not paying attention all these things the, things the mp that, will tell you he doesn't construct roads <laughs> You see, so these are the things that we need to mm-hmm. tackle. Mm-hmm. For example, the Medina uh, overhead bridge, mm-hmm. which killed a lot of people before government stepped in to, to construct it. These are the things that we need to think about first off, mm-hmm. before naming after people. For example, if, if we told a line that we want to build things and then name them after our heroes, I think we'll be better off rather than targeting... Renaming. On, yes, renaming mm-hmm. instead of building to name. Because if, for example, we, we set the tone that, okay, this year, let's build maybe 20 schools or 10 schools and then name them after former heroes. In that sense, you know that, okay, now we are trying to build from scratch and then we name it after them. But when a thing has a name and we have to take it off and put somebody's name on it, what if the next government also comes and decides to rename? For example, mm. our own Flagstaff House. Mm. It has been Flagstaff House, Jubilee to House, Jubilee House, mm. back to Flagstaff House, mm-hmm. and I think back to Jubilee House again. Mm-hmm. And it depends on which government it's comes in is in power. Because if it, because now, MPP came to power, they have scrapped 1st July. They have scrapped... Um, 21st September. 21st September. Mm-hmm. Now it's come to August 4th. Mm-hmm. 
they, they were the ones president kufo came he scrapped 31st december mm-hmm. they scrapped um um there was another one 4th june june, june 4th, 4th yeah aha uh-huh. mm-hmm. they scrapped all of them because they felt it does it not, not in the yeah, ideologies no it doesn't mm-hmm. sync with our mm-hmm. democracy mm-hmm. world because mm-hmm. lives were lost and mm-hmm. but history is history exactly you know you can't you can't dumb it down or you can't ignore it so i feel government every government that comes into power must look into this let's build to name instead of renaming sometimes when you are changing history you might think you are changing it to suit yourself mm-hmm. but you never know that it might affect the majority of the people because mm. what we know is what we know exactly if you know you know mm. so for me i feel government needs to retract from that path mm-hmm. and start building to na- if we have to anna i was thinking about we have a kweji um interchange, circle, interchange. Mm-hmm. we have ubiche bilamte yes it's nice so maybe buzia also needs one let's build one for him let's not go and rename an institution after him let's okay. build another one for him mm-hmm. what i mm-hmm. said let's give credit where is the ubia send it me i had in kruma even built the airport Mm-hmm. and it was there that kutuka went to die okay. and he didn't need it too so and okay. all those things if mm-hmm. those ones if you come and you you tell us that okay this is the main thing so we need to rename it or something it's understandable but when we have to rename adena yede obidinya to swaje no now later on we say no maybe the person is not worth it yenyi ne din ever no for that one i i think i disagree so let's build from scratch to honor our heroes rather than renaming Perfect delivery there from Dada Hafko. And I'm loving this segment because um, sometimes people think that people, those who are doing showbiz, they don't know anything apart from Shatawale and uh, Stoneboy. Uh, you have to know that, yes, they are also uh, people who can make decisions in governance as well. So feel free, join this. It is called The News Today. Now, The News Today is about the renaming, the renaming, the renaming. What is your opinion on that? Let's do more on Twitter at Xylophone1021. At Xylophone1021. Phone 1021 and remember the hashtag showbiz agenda. Give me a mention at Sammy Flex and let's do more on Twitter on uh, WhatsApp as well. 0266 660 735. 0266 660 735. This is uh, the news today. Chief Charles, you are going to wrap up for me, boss. Yeah, bro, Sammy. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Do you know what I call it? No, I call it the fallacy of nomenclature and comedy of errors. Fallacy of nomenclature in the sense that the MPP in particular seem co- very culpable in renaming institutions. If you study historical antecedents, or if you study, sorry, political antecedents, that I have co- rightly said that, you know, during the first tenure of the MPP governments headed by Kufo, there were certain uh, public holidays that were scrapped and all can tell if you are old enough to be politically conscious you can tell that it was politically motivated and not in the public interest um i not rightly ask what benefits what does it add to the citizenry if you rename and Sami, renaming, as has been done to the University of Energy and whatever, comes with a budget and a cost to the taxpayer. Mm, 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 mm. Because everything is going to be changed. Everything is going to be changed. Mm. From everything, stationary to... From every- stationary mm. to uh, Signboards. Look, In fact, everything. Everything will be changed. So it mm. is coming with the cost to the taxpayer. And to what benefits, to what intent, intent and purpose should the, should the taxpayer bear the cost of renaming when our basic needs are outstanding? So, I mean, it is a comedy of, of, of errors. But you see, this government is deliberate about these things. It is deliberate in the sense that it is trying to etch a certain direction in the minds of of the general public because naming is important because as soon as you bear a certain name it comes with questions it comes with probe it comes with inquiry someone would like to know why is so and so named so for instance being named after Buzia if perhaps Buzia is obscured 
in our history. Now he has been thrusted to the front. It's Abrifa Buzia. And then his story will be told. So clearly, there is, you know, there is a deliberate agenda to bring certain people in our history to the fore. Obviously, because of the current administration. Okay. Question is, is it healthy for our democracy? Then I've got alluded to the fact that what if the next government comes to power and decides that we too are re- we are we are reinstating it or we are taking it back to the name that it bore? That will be another cost to the taxpayer. Okay. So the political class, what are they doing to us? We vote them there, and then they spend them our money as they wish, as they want. It's definitely not healthy for national development and nation building. More so when you didn't actually build it. Mm, 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 when you didn't mm. build it. For me, somewhere, somehow, subconsciously, it is an admittance of the current government that we have failed at so many things. Because if you are worth your salt, build a name. Okay. Mm. Build a name. Okay. What is the essence? I mean, let me, let me, let me. Wrap, let wrap me. up, wrap up. You mm-hmm. gave everybody more time than you are giving me. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't ever be thinking like that. I beg you. <laughs> or maybe mm. because I was speaking. No, well, you, so Sammy, you are ending well. That's why Sammy, I was thinking that maybe well, that is it. So, Sammy, obviously, from all three of us, I don't think it is in the national interest. Okay. It is not, it doesn't add anything to us, save political expediency. They should retract from it. Thank you so much, Chief Charles, for uh, ending on that note for me. Now, my friend from Accra FM has sent um, pictures of the demonstration at Pokwasi to me. People are burning ties and all that. Uh, others are in red, uh, calling for better roads and not renaming of universities and more. Uh, you can also share this with us on uh, Twitter at xylophone1021. But then I keep asking myself, why don't we have one national agenda, one ideology for Ghana? Because it looks as if every political party has their ideologies. Then, when they me, come, and, and they just want to champion it. And do you know, as we speak, mm. book publishers in Ghana are confused because they are still not sure what is going to be in uh, syllabus like social studies and exactly. all that. No, that has been as it stands yeah. now, they, they are not sure you know, what I, they should publish because uh, the, the history is kind of being changed gradually. Small, 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 small. Be near you, we have free, you, we have free. And now they are confused. And and I keep saying, you know, that if we do not take our educational system serious, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, we'll have a nation full of, excuse me to say, dumb, airheaded folks. Mm. Yes. Mm. People F- who can only speak English. People who can only speak English and mm. nothing more. Mm. If we do not take our education serious, the curriculum we deal with, the kind of things that are captured in the curriculum, if those things are not well taken care of, 20, 30 years from now, we'll have people in this country who are just airheads with nothing in there. All they could do is to speak English. And you'd have a few people who are able to send their children abroad to study to come and lord over these people. So mm-hmm. let's be careful. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's read your tweets so we can wrap up on that note.